now celebrating its 30th anniversary, Saturday Night Fever is the biggest selling soundtrack album of all time. And the Bee Gees have found a second or possibly third home, I suppose you lose count after a time, here in Miami. Robin Gibb even had Tony Blair to stay one Christmas. When I caught up with him, I asked him about his and the Bee Gees connections with Miami. Actually, it was Eric Clapton that recommended us uh, using the studios in Miami, which is uh, Criteria Studios. He recorded 461 Ocean, Boule uh, Ocean Boulevard in Miami, and uh, it was there that we met up with the producer Arif Mardin, who recently di uh, died, and uh, one of the great pioneers of American music. But you decided to put down roots there, you, you and Morris as well. Well, it, it was various routes. Uh, it wasn't exactly routes as, as we had to be there for the, uh, because the studios were there and the work, and uh, we, we continued just to make records there. And it was better to make records while it was warm rather than when it was cold. It was, we would come out at 4 o'clock in the morning and it was freezing cold. It wasn't much of a, an encouragement to go back in again. So uh, you didn't want to stay home, you wanted to go back to the studio, but it, it, you, you recoup better. Uh, when you had a long stint in the studio. And what about interacting with uh, the locals? Well, what, what's happening in Miami is, is, is kind of a sea change. It is actually becoming um, uh, sp Spanish, uh, uh, South American. It is the gateway either, it's not the gateway to the north, it's almost the gateway to the South America as well. And it's, it's, it is, uh, their politics is very uh, Latin American. On, on the agenda more than than um, Anglo America. Do you get involved at all or not? Well, not a lot because a lot of the candidates are are Spanish, and sometimes you can't even pronounce their names. And and, the, and a lot of the advertisements on billboards and the sides of buses are in, in Spanish. There is a, a park commemorating um, Morris there, and, and yes, you, uh, can you tell us a little about that, how that came about? Well, me and Barry, I think it was last last year we were at, we commemorated the uh, a plaque, especially especially for Morris. Uh, at the marina, which is just near the recording studios that we own, and uh, yeah, and um, I think that, that uh, you know that's uh, something very special to us because you spent so much time there. You're a British citizen. Yes, yeah. I am. So does that mean you uh, get involved at all in American politics? The view I have about American politics is today is that it is about economics and less about politics. Uh, I think what the candidates haven't mentioned so far. It, either candidate, either McCain, uh, Obama, is that they're not relating the credit crunch with what's going on in Afghanistan and Iraq. And I think, you know, wars cost money. They cost money in World War II, cost money in World War I. And, uh, and it, it's affected the whole world. But, and, you know, we all know what happens in America affects uh, Europe. And there is trillions going into the war. And it does, ha and this is, this is the effect that the, the war is having. We are having a credit crunch because of war, and, and neither really can really mention this, uh, because it is something that everyone agreed to. Well, Obama, on the one hand, says that uh, he would wind down the war in Iraq, but he also says that uh, he would uh, step up the war in Afghanistan. Yeah, well, exactly. So, so on one hand, he's... He's trying to please everybody all the time. And I think William Pitt said in 1794 that if you try to please everybody, you end up pleasing no one. I, I think Obama is credible. And I think a change is good. He's young. And I, I think a good new young president is good. But I think you have to have specific, uh, specific changes have to be made, particularly the, the, economy, the economy, the way it stands at the moment. And, and I think the war is one of the direct uh, reasons for those so consequences. on balance you'd, you'd prefer Obama to win, although of course you don't have a vote. I like change. I like to, I'd like to see a, a, a young man in the, in the presidency. I'd like to hear more uh, at this latest, latest stage, because I think the, the American presidency, presidency affects the whole world. Does he remind you in any way of, of you know, JFK or, I don't know, Tony Blair, perhaps? There is a, a JFK, Tony Blair spring about him. And, uh, and spring is the right word. It's a kind of sort of uh, developing. Something new is in the air. And that, that's what happened in 97 when Blair came into office. It happened in 60, uh, 1961 yeah, yeah. when, when JFK came in, didn't he? It was 60, 61 yeah. when he came to office. There was that un intangible feeling that something wonderful was going to happen, we, but we can't quite see it yet. Do you come across them at all? American uh, politicians? Uh, oh yes, uh, I think uh, because a lot of them uh, are fans and 
uh, they're into music and uh, and they're interesting to talk to um, uh, the Kennedy family and uh, they uh, they all are very interested in music uh, Gordon Brown is a wonderful man he's very interested in music and, uh, and a very good person. He's a Bee Gees fan. Big, 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 big Bee Gees fan. I didn't know that. Yes, he is, and uh, and, uh, and he's got wonderful nature too, and um, and uh, as it does, does Blair. And one of the the, the, the few uh, conservative leaders I like was, was William Hague. I think a uh, marvelous yeah. speaker. And whoever he is, you tell me, you've already got an appointment to see the next president of the United States. Uh, yes, that's, that's, bit, that's that. in June. Yes, that, that's what are you going to be doing then? Uh, I'm president of CSAC, which is the, an organization worldwide for about uh, three million scriptwriters, music writers, songwriters, authors, and it's really championing the rights and copyrights of those people. And um, I go to the European Commission from time to time and do keynote speeches. I'm doing one in um, uh, this year in France, uh, I've just done one in Berlin, and, uh, and, the next, and the next American one will be at the White House with the new American president. You mentioned Tony Blair, and he famously spent his last um, I think Christmas in power, or that season in power, in, in your home in Miami, which caused a lot of... Uh, he did a lot of the Irish uh, he did, yeah, stuff there. Uh, six o'clock in the morning, he was speaking uh, a lot to uh, Jerry Adams and all those people, doing a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of the good work that he did was done, done from there. His holidays have always been, you know, widely commented on. What, what do you think about all that? Well, Prime Ministers have the right to have friends, and as musicians and composers have the right to friends, uh, and uh, it was just, you know, friends together. The thing was, he was still doing business, and he was still, still running the country and getting on with the Irish. You had to hide behind the prop plants, is that right? <laughs> That's from the boats, yeah. There because it was on the, because it's on the on the bay front. There was a lot of boats for the first couple of days outside the front. Well, photographers. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, because it's, it's a very it's very vulnerable, you know, and it's uh, it's, it's very open. So there, there was a lot of trees brought in. Well, good. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.